the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. Today is Friday, and it's in the third week of Easter. And we hear Jesus say, My flesh is true food. What does that mean? Does that mean that a hamburger isn't true food? No, in the Gospel of John, truth is something that lasts forever. Truth is something solid, rock solid, that you can stand on forever. And so that we can prepare our hearts to stand on the rock, to eat food that lasts for eternal life, let us call to mind our human nature. Let us call to mind how we are like dust or like a vapor of smoke. Let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who have come to know the grace of the Lord's resurrection may through the love of the Spirit ourselves rise to newness of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Saul, still breathing murderous threats against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus that if he should find any men or women who belonged to the way, he might bring them back to Jerusalem in chains. On his journey, as he was nearing Damascus, a light from the sky suddenly flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, Who are you, sir? The reply came, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless for they heard the voice but could see no one. Saul got up from the ground but when he opened his eyes he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. For three days he was unable to see. He neither ate nor drank. There was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias, and the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and ask at the house for Judas, for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is there praying, and in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him, that he may regain his sight. But Ananias replied, Lord, I have heard from many sources about this man, what evil things he's done to your holy ones in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to imprison all who call upon your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for this man is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before Gentiles, kings, and children of Israel, and I will show him what we, he will have to suffer for my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. Laying his hands on him, he said, Saul, my brother, the Lord has sent me, Jesus who appeared to you on the way by which you came, that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately things like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. He got up and was baptized, and when he had eaten, he recovered his strength. He stayed some days with the disciples in Damascus, and he began at once to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Be to God. God.
that he has for us and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever go out to all the world and tell the good news go out to all the world and tell the my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him says the Lord Hallelujah 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 The Lord be with you and with your spirit a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John Glory to you O Lord Lord be in our minds and our Lord, lips and, and in our hearts the Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen. I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The things he said, these things he said while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So I want to talk to you a little bit about truth, because uh, in the time of Paul, he was a Pharisee, and boy, did he know truth. He knew it to the jot and tittle. He knew every single little bit of it. And uh, these people would memorize almost the whole body Bible. It said that if you took a pen and, or a nail and you put it through their Bible, some of these rabbis could tell you every letter that that nail would touch as it passed through the Torah or through the holy books. They memorized it so much. They knew what they thought was truth but what they had was ideas in their mind. And they would fight over those ideas in their mind. We're still like that today. We have Catholics who are like that. They'll fight over ideas in the mind because bad ideas are uh, cruel and a hard taskmaster. But Jesus said, those ideas aren't truth because it'll pass away. Everything passes away. Where there's prophecy, it'll pass away, it'll fail. Where there's tongues, they will cease, they will pass away. Where there's any other thing, it'll pass away. But I will remain forever. Love remains forever. And so Jesus teaches us a new commandment, to love as he loves. And so on the, on the celebration of the Eucharist, when John wrote his gospel, he didn't focus on the Eucharist so much because we were doing that part of it right. We were getting the ritual down, the liturgy down right, but he did the foot washing and he taught us to be as he is. The saints do the same thing. They teach us that they have to give up everything they learned so that they can know, know intimately and personally, this Jesus who lasts forever, who is from eternity and will last for eternity, and we too will if we know him. And so we have to give up this idea of truth in our head. There's 
No truth in our head, it's just a brain, just like a heart has blood or kidneys have you know what. But there is truth, and Jesus is truth. The Holy Spirit is truth, and we're called to set aside everything else as it were, so that we can know God as God really is. When we get to heaven, if we believe these ideas in our head, then we'll get there and we'll go, oh my gosh, it's nothing like what I imagined. St. Thomas Aquinas, when he met God, said, Oh my gosh, he's nothing like what I imagined. He threw all his books in the fire because he wanted to know that God he had met so much. He wanted to invite that God into his life and live the rest of his life in union with that God. Yeah, we can know truth. Paul wasn't on the right track. He had to be knocked off his horse. And neither were those brilliant, brilliant rabbis in the time of Jesus. They also were called blind guides to the blind. Lord, give us eyes to see like you removed the scales from Paul's eyes, like you helped the blind man to see when the rabbis were in fact blind. Give us eyes to know you. You are truth. God, all we want is more of you. That's our faith. It's Jesus, true food. And what a wonderful banquet awaits us, and what a wonderful faith we have. The intention of today's Mass are the First Friday Memorials. Loving Heavenly Father, as we offer our prayers uh, for our church, Lord, help us to grow in the truth of our Lord Jesus, this truly contemplative and mystical knowing of God in a way that only you can help us to know. Lord, make us know you, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, and for our world, that it might come to know you little by little, uh, in the light that uh, you shine through your word and through your people and through your church. Lord, let our world grow in the knowledge of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for Holy Redeemer, our wonderful parish, Lord, that we might be a place where truth is Jesus, truth is the Holy Spirit, and we walk in that truth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, for all those who are sick, suffering, for those who have addictions, for those who are alone or sad, or in any way need to know you, the way we all desire, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, for those who have died, that they might see the glory of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who grieve their loss, that they might be consoled, knowing that truth means we will be together again, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the First Friday Memorials, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we bring all these prayers to you, our loving Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We believe that our Eucharist is true food, and prepare in your own hearts that spiritual communion, that prayer, that's put up on the website so that you can pray that prayer to really know Jesus. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Lord, we ask you to receive us, to be pleased with the sacrifice we offer in humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sins. And pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise 
the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever, therefore overcome with paschal joy. Every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks and praise, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Earl, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory are yours. Now Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, Miserere nobis, Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pace. Lord, we truly want to know you as you are. In the breaking of the bread, let our eyes be opened. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The crucified is risen from the dead and has redeemed us. Alleluia. I am the bread of life All who eat this bread Will never die I am God's love revealed I am broken pray. We have partaken of the gift of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.